Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Okay, all right. Uh, let's uh, just continue from where we left off. Uh, just to share the screen one more time. So we, we we spoke about uh, microphones. Uh, we spoke about micro microphones, a mixing console, uh, and what it does, and uh, the equalizing uh, equalizer console, and the amplifiers, um, and you know what it does. And I'll also share this PPT with you all uh, if you want it, because um, but uh, everything is there in your notes already right so just to continue uh, from uh, what we were talking about after the amplifiers there are speakers you know what the speaker does it, it just uh, you know gives the output of uh, you know everything that is happening without uh, every gear every single gear you know think about it is uh, so crucial isn't it um, like if you don't have a microphone you will not be heard if you have a microphone and you don't have an amplifier or a mixing console um, there is nothing to receive the signal that's coming from the microphone. And then if you don't have the speakers and you have the microphone and a mixing console, there is no output, um, right? So, and these are the basic uh, gears that um, the, every church would need to have. Doesn't matter the size of the congregation at all. Right? The microphone, the mixing console, the amplifier, um, if the speakers are not uh, active, then and then you also need to have speakers, right? Um, so that's where we're at. And um, this is another uh, important piece of equipment. Uh, this is uh, called a snake, <laughs> uh, right? So this is uh, so this this is snake. So uh, what it does basically now uh, is um, a, a person who's in charge of the mixing console, who's at the mixing console, uh, is far away from the stage isn't it um and so you need to have uh, so what this uh does is um this thing uh yeah this part of the snake will be uh, on the stage right and because we don't want to have like a 20 odd cables running from stage to the mixing console uh we'll have just one big cable a uh, one fat cable that looks like this goes from the stage all the way to the mixing console and so it, you know there's no much um, mess around the stage and also coming from the stage all the way to the mixing console right uh, uh Roth, um anything else uh, to be uh, noted about this gear um, no i think that's that's primarily it. just just to just to have a clean run uh, one one important thing that um the mixer needs to be the position of the mixer needs to be at a place where you can hear the speakers which is why you're in front of the uh, speakers in some places i've noticed they've done it wrong and i don't know how they judge they are either behind the speakers or on the side or on a different floor you know but ideally you want to be where the where in the center of the hall where the speaker coverage is best to to reach to, okay. For your microphone to reach that position, you need something like this instead of running twenty cables, like you said. Right. Okay. And this is also uh, a little dated, isn't it? In terms of, uh, and this is used only for analog mixers, uh, which we Correct. discussed. So, right. So yeah. So analog mixers have multiple connections like this. A digital mixer would just be one Ethernet cable. Just an Ethernet cable would go into one of those boxes, just like this. It, it looks the same, but it's right. just a single cable. But in this case, you'll have to plug in like 20, 20 connectors. Instead of that, it's just one. And so uh, again, this this is uh, this will turn out to be very uh, expensive and uh, risky, isn't it? As in, uh, like because uh, so this big fat uh, what is this tube or whatever contains all these uh, you know um cables in it right all all these things the connectors and whatnot if one of these connectors or one of these cables that's going through one uh this uh snake uh tube if it gets you know damaged or whatnot uh it's a very time uh time 
it's, it's, it's a very painful job to actually open the snake and find out which cable has uh, been damaged and then replace it. It's, it's, an, it's, it's an expensive affair, isn't it? Yeah, quite tedious. Quite tedious to figure out where, how, and all of that. But yeah. And that's why the Ethernet cable uh, is, is a lot better. It's just one cable that runs from the stage all the way to the mixing console, mixer console. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah, and that's it. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's the snake, and these are all the FX processors, uh, as in that adds uh, delay and some of the things that we spoke about. Um, and and this one is what we call as the monitor speakers, guys. Um, on the stage, uh, these speakers will be set like this. So this is uh, for uh, people on the stage uh, to hear what, what they are singing or what they are playing. Uh, this is more, again, old school, uh, isn't it? Uh, as in some, not... Not, I don't want to say old school. Uh, it, this this is still being followed, uh, but uh, what we uh, use at um, say APC Central, you will not find these uh, speakers on the stage because uh, we will all have something called the in-ear monitors, um, right? So we will have uh, we'll plug into um, another cable, and we will be able to hear what we are playing or what we are singing, and those are called in-ear. It look it look like. Uh, like a earphone, basically. That's why it's called in ear because it's going inside your ears, and that's an in ear monitor. And these are just stage monitors, um, right? So uh, again, if you have to invest in in, in ear monitors, that, that's again buying an extra gear. Um, there's a lot of again money involved in that as well. And so I think for starters, we can just start off with uh, the stage monitors, right? If you don't don't really have the budget for that at the moment, right? So um, that's. Um, that's the basic information regarding um, the sound and technology and the gadgets that you can use. Uh, but if you just take a look at uh, page 64 in your notes, right? Uh, now we talk about uh, like the online, uh, you know, if, if, if you wanted to record uh, your services or your worship team that's playing, if you want to record some of the gadgets that uh, you will require is what was, what was shown earlier as the an interface. This is now... Uh, a very a small interface, uh, right? It has only two channels to it. That means I can only connect um, two instruments at a time, either one microphone, one guitar, or one keyboard, or, or two instruments, one guitar, one keyboard, etc. And now there are bigger interfaces. Uh, Rohit, uh, what's the, like, uh, the biggest um, interface that you've seen, as in, in terms of how many channels it has? You can you can you can scale up a lot. I mean, okay, but interfaces maybe up to maybe twenty four, fifty, hundred. It depends on the application. You okay. can go all the way to like five hundred thousand if if the requirement demands it. But yeah, right. Okay. But I think so. Uh, this I remember, guys, just like that. Okay. Yeah, so remember, this is too if you want to record your worship services, uh, you know, just the audio part of it, right? Um, so it, you will need to invest in something called a, a digital audio workstation, uh, very famously known as DAW, D A W. So if you have a laptop and you have all these, uh, some of the softwares that are recommended down, uh, software recording. Um, Softwares for recording is uh, Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Cubase. Those are all the softwares. Uh, it's just not an exhaustive list uh, used to record. Okay, so um, the why why is this uh, called an interface? Is it's like a bridge. So you have the laptop, you have this interface, and then you have my instrument. Say say key, a keyboard or a guitar. So my the computer doesn't understand the keyboard language. Computer only understands binary, isn't it? It's, it? it speaks its own language, and so the computer needs and the, and my and the instrument needs an interface that will translate. Uh, that will, what is that? What do you say? Uh, is that right? Translate, uh, interpret that signal that it is receiving from the keyboard, uh, and then it you know it changes that signal and it sends to the computer, and then computer un now understands the language. Uh, that's why an interface is important if you choose to re start recording your uh, worship services and so, and some of the brands are suggested guys um, you know some of the suggestions like 
uh, Scarlett uh, 2.2, PreSonus Audio Box. Um, those are all some of the brands that you can explore uh, if you want to um, record your worship services. Just that's just the audio, uh, but audio is not sufficient these days, isn't it? We also want to record the video, um, <laughs> right? So, um, some of the suggestions that you can uh, invest in is uh, are the high definition cameras. Um, you can pick your own brand. You know, some of, I've suggested Canon. Um, uh, R800 uh, high definition cameras um, for you to uh, being able to capture the video um, and also a, a tripod stand that goes with it so that you can mount the camera um, on 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 a tripod etc and some video editing softwares are also suggested um, so that is iMovie Final Cut Pro and and whatnot right uh, you guys are still alive right you guys are okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Christopher, go ahead. Oh uh, yes. So in this uh, recording uh, infrastructure, does this also take care of, um, particularly in the you know in the in the COVID uh, uh, COVID times, where uh, you have people uh, you know in different locations, maybe some you know the guitarist at at home and uh, you know the keyboard somewhere else and everything and. They are all sort of connected to some, 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 I guess, some software, and then it goes through a mixer and everything. Does this also support this? Yes, that's pretty much uh, what is done, Christopher. So uh, let's say that uh, you have a laptop, uh, you have, and you are uh, a guitarist, and you have an interface, right? You can play your guitar part. Um, with the help of you know these gadgets, you can record it onto your system, and then you can export that file and email it to me. And now I can say a play a keyboard part using the same setup that I have here, and record with what you have already played. And that's uh, that's what was done. That is what is being done as well in terms of. Um, that's how technology helps. Like a guitarist in Australia can uh, record and send it to some, uh, fi uh, send the file to someone sitting in the United States or in the other way, uh, other part of the world or India, or wherever. And then we can record using the same gadgets, um, and so we can make a song from different parts of the world together. So, so that, so that is the recording part. No, I, I guess what I'm coming from is, uh, can this also support uh, a live? Uh, a live performance, you know, where the guitarist and the uh, keyboard and the vocalist yeah. are all in different locations. Um, and it, it's, it, there is no file being sent, it's just, it's actually be happening live. Right. See, I mean, the output will come, but there will be, because of uh, our internet, uh, there will be latency uh, issues. Um, Roth, is that, is that right? Uh, there will be, it, it will not be in sync unless, I don't know. Yeah. You need to have like an amazing internet connection. Like every everybody around the world needs to have that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the the interface is the only way to connect an instrument and go to Zoom. But for everyone to sing together through a Zoom call, uh, because of latency, it'll it'll never sing together. That's why. Like simple example. Have you ever tried singing Happy Birthday to someone in a Zoom call? No one will be in sync. <laughs> so, that, like that's yeah. a, that's just an ex example of how that wouldn't work. But yes, the interface will function to do that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So those are some of the suggestions for audio and video recording uh, cameras and whatnot. Um, also. Uh, the last part of this chapter in page 65 just briefly touches about uh, lighting um, as well. Um, lighting kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it elevates the whole experience um, as well. Um, you know, again, please don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, it's like uh, something about using fancy lights and whatnot. We've, we've made it all about that, okay, you know, if if we if we are on a stage with all these amazing fancy lights, we've kind of made it in life, or uh, we kind of look for that spotlight moment. Um, so worship is not all about that, and and all of these, everything what we are talking about uh, are tools, are vessels to uh, 
um, just serve better, to serve your congregation better, to uh, elevate the experience better. That's the whole point of this, right? Um, nowhere in this is uh, a competition with another church or showing off, saying, okay, they have this, we have that, okay, we have ordered to do better than that and whatnot. Um, what works best for your church? How can you make uh, the, uh, how can you make your congregation experience um, the service better? Um, that's the whole point of this, right? And so one of the aspects of that is uh, lighting, um, right? Lighting systems for use in worship settings. Uh, it, it it sets the mood, the atmosphere in the room. Uh, if the room is bright, it's happier, it's celebratory, uh, etc. If the room is if, if the lighting is let's say dull, it's if it's minimal. Uh, there's a sense that okay, it's maybe more intimate, private, and whatnot, right? But I'm and having said that, I'm not saying that you can you cannot have intimate and private moments of worship uh, if the room is bright. So regardless, you need to have that, but it's just a vessel that's helping, right? Um, a light should match the mood in the room. Celebration, uh, it's like a you know high tempo song is being played, uh, you know, full lighting light up the congregation so the congregation is seen. Um, intimate moments, intimate worship, slower songs, um, lesser lighting um, will help, right? Um, and um, I, I think these are all just suggestions, guidelines. Uh, you see what will work best for your congregation for the setting that you are in. Um, one tube light also is fine <laughs> if, if that works for your setting. Uh, but that's what it is. And some of the softwares that are uh, used for projection, uh, projecting the lyrics of the songs, uh, as, as I mentioned over there, which is like Pro Presenter, Easy Worship, Media Shout, uh, some of the softwares. Uh, what we use at APC is uh, Easy. We use Easy, Easy Worship and Pro Presenter. Uh, at Central, APC Central, we use Pro Presenter. At the locations, we use Easy Worship uh, to project the lyrics of the songs. Um, it's good. Those are all good investments to, uh, to invest in. Uh, to make the experience better, right? Um, and some of the resources are mentioned. Okay, so, uh, I mean, uh, is there anybody here? Uh, I know, Mangi, you, you take care of the sound part of your church, is that right, or? Yes, Pastor, yes, I do. Okay, so do you want to share a little bit about your experience as in uh, what, what you do and some of the gears that, uh, that you have, and also the importance of uh, a worship pastor understanding uh, the sound guy, the sound head. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share. Um, it is uh, being a sound guy is uh, overseeing the sound. It's not. It's not easy because. Uh, all right, uh, let's pause, okay? <laughs> let's pause. So, uh, when Mangi started responding, he took a deep breath. He was like, ah. <laughs> so, that's going to give a gist, guys, of what a sound heads go through, okay? So, their job is not easy. Sorry, Mangi, I had to interrupt and yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I feel you, bro. Thank you, uh, thank you Pastor. Uh, because congregation, you have uh, different people, some who have hearing problems, some who who just can, can't hear some frequency, they can only hear low frequency, they cannot hear high, and some can hear high and low. And then you have people coming to, to some person saying, oh, this is too loud, or oh, I cannot hear that instrument, or oh, my daughter's voice is not good enough. So, mm. yeah, trying to find, <laughs> finding balance between all that, it is, it, is, it is a challenge. And also finding balance between uh, buying new equipment and uh, trained sound people or like volunteer that's also a big thing so we, you can buy a lot of equipment and if your uh, sound people are not equipped enough and they don't have good ear to hear so love bad sound and you can have good trained people and if you you don't have good equipment for them to work with also it will also be a challenge so finding the balance between that that's what the challenge i get right Thanks, Maggie. Thank you. I mean, you're just dropping some truth bombs over there, as in you can buy all the equipments, but then if you don't have people who are equipped to handle that, man, Maggie, 
it's amazing. Yeah, uh, the importance of it. Um, so another question, um, and because uh, is there anybody else who works uh, takes care of the sound um, uh, in your churches? Uh, Okay, uh, Manky. So uh, initially, uh, as in, what would how would what would you suggest um, in terms of um, say being patient uh, with your you know with the senior pastor or whoever that you are uh, you know is leading you? As in, so how do you handle situations like you've been asking uh, about for a specific gear to enhance the experience? Um, as you've been asking and asking and asking, uh, have you been in situations like that, and how you handled situations like that, um, and being patient? Uh, what what do you do? Um, yeah, situation like that. It, at the beginning, it was difficult because uh, uh, pastor didn't didn't see the need for all those equipment, and right. once right. we we, we insist and buy something, get something new, and then they see the benefit that comes with getting new gear. Then they they create a, a sense of trust. Right. So so that when when you tell right. them that we need to ask them for something, they they will trust you because mm -hmm. now they've yeah you've created that uh, like you said before. They, they 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 trust you to do your job. You know what you're doing. So trust is the first thing and. The right. second thing right. is, yeah, bring in an expert that will some another voice from outside that will tell them, okay, you you are getting this for this reason. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thanks, Maggie. Yeah, that's wonderful insights there. Uh, uh, Rohit, anything that you'd like to add uh, to those challenges? Um, I think. I think. From the from the top down, uh, recognizing it, assigning assigning a budget, saying this is what we want to do, um, getting an understanding of, I mean, just talking it out, basically. I mean, that just that just goes it goes a long way, yeah. And uh, just having that understanding of what you want to achieve, helping people under relate with the tools that you know too well, yeah, but helping them understand the importance of it, you know. And uh, right. and then take it take it from there. Whatever whatever your congregation can accommodate at whatever pace, grow. Keep keep pushing for more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Roth. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, as in just uh, I mean it's just so beautifully put uh, in terms of uh, you know winning winning your senior pastor's trust. As in you know we are investing in equipments and most of these equipments depending on the size of the congregation uh it can the prices will vary right from you can it can go and then before investing um they will need to know okay is this worth it and why why we are doing it and also getting in uh, an expert's opinion um it will always help yeah thanks for that Mangi. all right um uh, guys for everybody else um yeah, if you have questions, I was just going to say that I want to have, you know, leave this thing or time open for questions in terms of sound and technology. If you have any questions, um, you know, just please feel free to go ahead and either type it in the chat section or ask um, either me, Rohit, or even Mangi will, uh, you know, um, be happy to answer those questions. Right? Um, yes, Sahi, please go ahead. So, thank you, Pastor. I just wanted to ask, um, the place of maintenance of uh, sound equipment. Um, if you could just, um, what's the role with the worship team and the sound team in terms of maintenance of um, all this equipment? Yeah, thank you. That's a very good question. I think so. Maintenance, uh, maintaining the sound equipment. Uh, how do how does the worship team and the sound team work together? To maintain the equipments uh, that, that that they are functioning well, everything is oiled and good. Is that right? Say that that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rohit or Mangi, you wanna add to it? Anyone? Yeah. Um, I think I think first off, uh, value the equipment you do have. Yeah. 
uh, use it uh, use it the way it's intended anything anything that's uh, pushed beyond limit I'm, I'm talking about a speaker like as an example yeah yeah if you if you push push too much you might just damage damage the speaker and with smaller smaller things like how you handle microphones uh, be extra careful careful don't drop microphones uh, you know let's say lyric stands if you have a camera for example like as you as you grow things like that just being intentional uh, understanding the value of what you have yeah and um, as as you face problems yeah make sure again i think so many of these things come back to communication um, if something goes wrong make sure you uh, make sure everyone knows about it on that day yeah yeah you, so 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 that next week when you come you don't you don't realize like 15 minutes before you start that this is not going to work and then and then you're put in a tight spot of you know what are we going to do now yeah so address things as is i mean as and when they happen yeah and uh, yeah fine i mean if you can uh, rectify the problem in house yeah other you can do that otherwise you can get technical support from outside and uh, you know have a you can do regular maintenance as well over over periods of time. Just just check everything. Yeah, there'll be there's there's always this bunch of equipment that's lying around in one corner that nobody touches, hasn't touched for months, years, <laughs> whatever. But uh, just occasionally go over it. Yeah, just run just run through everything you have. Make sure everything is working well, and you can repair whatever doesn't work. Yeah. So have a periodic check. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Maggie, anything that you would like to add? Uh, uh, like Rohit said, is peri periodic check. Like what we do is uh, things like a guitar and other instruments. We recommend that every musician bring is is on. So we only provide drums and the keyboard. So that's uh, yeah. my responsibility. I have to make sure that everything it's it's working. It's tuned and that's working in working yeah, condition okay. but everything else like bass guitar uh, the player has to provide this on so that they can they can they can look after them and things like sound system um uh, that's my responsibility i have to go every day uh not every day but every saturday or friday to make sure that i, I check everything and <laughs> double check so that when the band comes in on Sunday, uh, everything is working. So yeah, so everything is maintained. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. Everything is serviced. For the band. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So periodic checks, say, and also checking and double checking, as Maggie mentioned. And but another thing, what we did uh, at APC Rohit, if you, uh, we had a training. Uh, for the, I mean, the, where the sound team did a training for the worship team members. Um, they did a training on uh, what this gadget does, what this device does, how to hold a mic, how far a mic should be. Uh, all that goes into maintaining so that, you know, and how to fold the mic stand, how to set up the mic stand. Uh, you know, you don't just bend it, you know, so you have to uh, loosen the, the nut or the screw and then push it up and most of us I, I think a bad habit what we do with the mic stand is we just hold one the bottom part and we just push it up and on the long run what happens it it it, it damages uh the the whatever the thing uh, but so there's a way to you know loosen the mic stand and set it up accordingly so that it lasts long that's all maintaining isn't it so having a training have a your, either your sound team can do a training for your worship team members uh, that you know how to fold the mic stand, uh, how to set up the lyric stand or the music stand, um, and how to roll the cables. It's very important. So uh, at Central APC Central, after the service, uh, the worship team members are responsible for rolling the cables, and there was a training for that as well. Like how you roll, fold a cable, it can't be folded like at uh, the end looking like a, a noodle or or not it has to look beautiful uh, it has to, uh, you know so that it lasts long so training is one thing and another thing i would suggest say is have an inventory of the equipments of your church uh, you know have an inventory so if something goes missing you'll know it and if something has gone for service you will mark it okay guitar amplifier has gone for service um so yeah and i hope that helps
Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, guys? Uh, <clears throat> feel free to ask whatever it is. Like, you know, if you, yeah, silly or small, whatever it is with regards to sound technology, um, just feel free to shoot. Uh, I don't think you'll get this opportunity again. So. <laughs> Sir, a small. After this uh, COVID, ours is a very small uh, congregation, around 70 to 100. We had to in, uh, invest in a mixer and a, because we also started to have online uh, Zoom during the services so that only audio, not video. And it's a, a challenge for me to learn this or this sound and technology because I was very naive to that in the beginning, but now slowly yeah. learning it. I want to uh, master it after listening to you and to find how to take care of uh, sometimes emergency, sometimes the power goes off and immediately how to connect the different gadgets is a challenge for me. So yes. it's a very good and want to learn more about this how how it works and all that thank you sir hey so uh as in is, is it, there's a question there rupa or i want uh, more clarity about this uh, how to use this gadgets like mixer right. and all yeah yes sir. Right. Okay. Yeah, Arupa. So, if if there is a person, uh, as in who's handling sound and you know tech uh, like this, uh, I mean, just spending some time with that person, understanding uh, the functions and fun is important. So, it's no longer a choice. I would say that if I should know this or if I should learn in the in the day and age that we are living in, I would say it's a necessity for you to understand the basics of it. The basic fundamentals of how uh, you know this online thing works, like how you connect the audio and things like that. It's an it's become a necessity after since the pandemic, uh, I would say. So uh, spend time uh, and uh, with the person that you know who's in charge, or if you know of someone uh, who can help you understand this, uh, just you know spend like an hour or two. Um, that's that's one thing. And then if you have questions. Uh, Everything is on YouTube these days. <laughs> That's another thing, Rupa. I would say, uh, Rohit, is there anything that you would like to suggest? Yes, yes, I'm doing that too. most of the time. Okay. YouTube and yes, yeah, it's. But sometimes it's, you feel very lost. Uh, That's what I wanted to learn more about it. Thank you. You're welcome, Rupa. Yeah. Okay, uh, Asha says, how much patience and focus does it require? Uh, for what, Asha? Like anything in specific? Uh, life in general, you need a lot of patience and focus. <laughs> uh, Pastor, for the technology itself, like the sound system and everything. Sorry, your voice is breaking, Asha. I, I lost you there. Uh, um, for the technology, you, please, please, the sound and yeah, how much does it require for us? Like, how long should we just stay there and continue our? How long should you be there and uh, do the sound thing? Is that what you're saying? Um, to work out best, like example, Rohitana and Mangi was telling about their technology thing. So, like that, I'm trying to ask, like, how much does it require to like? Do we have to give the whole like? Do we have to stay there for a long time to just do it, or like we can just start it and just leave it for a minute? Right, so I think uh, yeah, Rohit, uh, you uh, yeah. go ahead. I think I think basic uh, a basic setting like once I think initially it will take some time. Yeah, let's say uh, I'm just I'm just say talking about like an hour before service, something like that. 
to just set things up. But once once the balance is there, there's not there's not too much of very tedious tweaking after that. So yeah. Thank you. Yes, uh, Christopher. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, there are actually two questions. So one is one question which uh, which uh, Sister Rupa had mentioned uh, with regards to uh, power um, uh, outages. Uh, so just wanted to understand uh, this sound equipment. Um, uh, does it get supported by UPS, or do you need, you need a generator, um, you know, backup generator set um, to, be, to be connected uh, in case power uh, goes off? And as you know, in Bangalore, it happens quite often. Uh, so that was the first question. And the second question is really about, uh, uh, this is, I think, more of a question for Oet is, um, what is that sort of one piece of equipment that uh, you haven't yet uh, got and which you think will make a major, major uh, a huge difference in, in the sound quality? Um, and, um, you know, something that you really want to, want to, want you, that you really think that, uh, you know, APC could, uh, could, uh, could buy. Uh, okay, so um, with the power concern, so you can you can do UPS or generator, uh, but uh, before you do that, it's important to figure out how much the power consumption is. So all your whatever electrical equipment you have, just just Google it. There will be a manual that says this is how much how much power power it consumes. So get a ballpark of how much how much overall power you need, and based on that, you can get a inverter as well. So um, two two of our locations. So actually, our our on campus Bible College has an inverter. So we've taken into account how much how much the power requirement is just for the small speaker system they use there. Uh, similarly, in the APC East location, also we we have an inverter set up over there. Like you said, frequent power cuts. But now they don't even know the difference. They don't even know when they've lost power. So it's become very seamless there. Yeah, uh, so you can go either way, whichever whichever suits you best. I think an inverter is more budget friendly. Yeah, uh, a generator would be more of an ongoing thing. So yeah, um, piece of equipment. We hire there. generators for events, isn't it, Rod? As in correct. Yes, for correct. Yeah, uh, you, hiring. You, uh, you hire on like an hourly basis. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but on the long run, it's never it's never a permanent asset. So if if you're not consuming too much power i think an inverter makes more sense yeah like uh, for a smaller size congregation an inverter yeah, is yeah 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 um in terms of equipment that that would help apc i i i think that uh, that curve is i i think we've already we went through a process actually during lockdown where quite a lot of things happened so we're we're actually we're actually on par with industry standard at the moment, and we're very grateful for that. Yeah. Uh, so we had we had a we had a quite a bit of quite a bit of things happening. We we went from we initially went to streaming, then we invested in some equipment to better the streaming system. Then we went to cameras, we went to lights. Basically, everything you learn today, we did in stages over the yeah. two years. Yeah. So I mean, I think a good reference would be just just go on YouTube and type uh, APC Church Service 2020 or something like that, and then watch today's. I mean, the service that happened last week. You'll 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 tell. You'll be able to tell. It's very evident the change. Yeah. At the moment, yeah, no, I don't I don't I don't think there's anything in the bucket list that's like necessary necessary. Yeah, I think we're in a good place. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Need a bigger channel, more channel mixer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, see, it's amazing. Uh, you know what he mentioned about uh, we got certain things at different stages. Uh, we didn't get all of it at one shot. And also, um, another important word that Rohit used was uh, grateful. Uh, yeah, we're extremely grateful to be part of a church where uh, where the leaders understand the importance of. Uh, um, a good sound um, and investing in, in equipments that um, not for the sake of investing, but then understands everything that goes into it. So we are very grateful uh, to have a leadership that understands that. Um, so we are not taking that for granted. 
I'm certainly not taking that for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, uh, guys? Maggie, do you have a question, or Avni, or the non-tech? I, I want questions from non-tech people as well, because uh, this will help you in your ministry in the long run. So just feel free to ask questions. Okay, it doesn't matter. Sir, can I ask? Yes, uh, Shrikumar. Yeah, yeah, uh, sir. I just want to know that is any different the difference between this um, um, the normal speakers and the monitor, or is it just um, the configuration is different, or um, is it? I just want to know that. Thank you, sir. It's it's just the purpose actually. So so as a speaker, so you can use the same speaker uh, on a on a, a tripod stand. Yeah. For the congregation, but it's more about the application. So the ones pointed towards the congregation are for them to listen. The one facing the people on the stage, the musicians, who are whoever or the preacher, is for them to hear themselves. So uh, I think uh, functionally, there's nothing different with the speaker. I think one thing you'll notice with the speaker is, I mean, if you notice the image, uh, it's it's cut at an angle. So the the shape of the box is cut at an angle. So the point of that is so that it's on the ground, it's not pointing up, it's tilted towards you. It's facing you from the ground up. So I think that's that's one difference. Yeah, I think we're just going back to the PPT. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So it, it, it can sit on the ground like this. It's flat, right? So basically, it's just yeah. the design difference, but application is pretty much the same, uh, Shri Kumar. Yeah. Yeah, if, yes. if someone if someone says it's a monitor, like let's say a description on Amazon says monitor speaker, it probably has this shape. But at the same time, it will have the whole for a pole mount. You can put it on a tripod. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, okay, then uh, I think we don't have. Oh, well, oh, right. There's a question here from Asha. Hearing about technology, it is really interesting. I would love to learn, be involved someday. Yeah, Rohit, uh, there's a volunteer for you who's been really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, take Asha as an intern. <laughs> yeah. Is very interesting. Um, if if you uh, if you come to APC, right? Uh, uh, APC Central. If you're a student here. Uh, this Sunday, uh, I'll be at APC Central, right? Uh, I'd love for you to come in a little early, and I'll just take you behind the scenes of uh, everything that happens, that, that goes on. So uh, you are most welcome to come, and I'll take you on a tour, on a personal tour of everything that happens behind the scene. OK? Um, but you'll have to come in early. Uh, so. All right. Um, Great. If there's nothing else, well, um, if there's anything that you can take away from this today's class is um, sound and technology are extremely crucial for you to have uh, an effective ministry, um, you know, and um, and I hope it uh, this has helped you in some way uh, in, in the in the long run. Right. And um, Rohit, thank you so much for taking uh, time off, though you have okay. it's down with cold. Uh, but thank you, thank you so much uh, for just being part of this session. I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, I'll see you in office a little later. <laughs> uh, good, guys. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, have a lovely rest of the day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Rohit. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Rohit. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Rohit. Yeah. Welcome. Bye-bye.